Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Tuesday the 22nd of November, commemorating Cecilia and reading evening prayer, All Saints to Advent, Common Worship, Daily Prayer. You'll find the words in the book, Common Worship, Daily Prayer, towards the beginning after prayer during the day, in the section, Morning and Evening Prayer during the seasons, towards the end of that, Evening Prayer, All Saints to Advent. Just a commemoration, so there's not too much adjustment, but you might want to look up Cecilia, 22nd November, about halfway through amongst the saints' days and festivals. You'll also find the words online at Arima's Daily Prayer or the Church of England's website, downloadable as apps for Apple or Android devices, and you might like to join us online, Facebook, we're live streaming, audio on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel, and the Zoom codes on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page if you'd like to join like that. But I'm in the building, 8 and 6 every day, me or a colleague usually do... Um, pop your nose around the door if you're passing but if you're making a bit of an effort perhaps you'd just like to make sure that we are here um, so that you're not disappointed oh God make speed to save us O oh Lord make haste to help us your faithful servants bless you they make known the glory of your kingdom blessed are you sovereign God our light and our salvation to you be glory and praise forever now as darkness is falling wash away our transgressions cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit by the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Isaac Watts hymn. Give me the wings of faith to rise within the veil and see the saints above. How great their joys, how bright their glories be. Once they were mourning here below and wet their couch with tears. They wrestled hard as we do now with sins and doubts and fears. I asked them whence their victory came. They with united breath ascribed their conquest to the Lamb, their triumph to his death. They marked the footsteps that he trod, his zeal inspired their breast, and following their incarnate God, possessed the promised rest. Our glorious leader claims our praise for his own pattern given, while a long cloud of witnesses show the same path to heaven. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the Psalms this evening at the back of the book, 99 and 101. We scroll on, if we're following electronically, Psalms 99 and 101. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. Let them praise your name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty King, who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies unto the Lord that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You are a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. I will sing of faithfulness and justice. To you, O Lord, will I sing. Let me be wise in the way that is perfect. When will you come to me? I will walk with purity of heart within the walls of my house. I will not set before my eyes the counsel that is evil. I abhor the deeds of unfaithfulness. They shall not cling to me. A crooked heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. 
one who slanders a neighbour in secret, I will quickly put to silence. Haughty eyes and an arrogant heart I will not endure. My eyes are upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. One who walks in the way that is pure shall be my servant. There shall not dwell in my house one that practices deceit. One who utters falsehood shall not continue in my sight. Morning by morning will I put to silence all the wicked in the land, to cut off from the city of the Lord all those who practice evil. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A song of God's assembled back in evening prayer, all saints to Advent. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels making festival, before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We have come before God, who is judge of all, before the spirits of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the, the mediator of the new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So let us give thanks and offer to God acceptable worship, full of reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. <clears throat> it may only be a commemoration of poor old Cecilia, but here is a reading from an exposition of the Psalms by Augustine, offered in celebrating the saints. Praise the Lord with a lyre, make melody to him with a harp of ten strings. O sing to God a new song. My friends, you've learned the new song, so now forget the old one. We are a new humanity, we have a new covenant with God, so let our song be new. New songs do not emerge from an old humanity, only a new humanity can learn it. Human beings whose old nature has been made new by the grace of God, men and women who enjoy a new covenant, which is nothing less than the kingdom of heaven. Our hearts yearn for it, so let us sing our new song, not with our lips, but with our lives. <clears throat> sing to God a new song, sing to him with joyful melody. You ask me in what way each of us is to sing the praises of God. Well, sing to God, but not out of tune. God does not want his ears assaulted by discordant noise. Sing in harmony, dear sisters and brothers. Imagine you are asked to entertain some fine musician with a song. Sing a song to please him, you're asked. There you are, quite untrained in music, anxious and afraid, lest you irritate this skilled musician, because what might pass unnoticed by an untrained ear will be criticised by a great artist. By the same token, no one is going to rush forward, thinking to please God, even if they think they have a beautiful voice. Because God, who will listen to that singer, and who will give his verdict on the performance, knows everything in us. Do you think he will command an art so polished that you need never fear singing a jarring note on that discerning listener's ear? But God himself has provided you with a way of singing. You do not have to bother to search for the right words, as if you need to find a lyric to please God. Simply praise God with songs of joy. It is fine praise of God when you sing with real joy. You ask, how is this done? It means realising that words are not enough to express what we are singing to God in our hearts. At harvest time, both in the fields and in the vineyards, the labourers work incredibly hard, and they always begin their day with songs whose words express their joy. But when their joy brims over and words are not enough, they abandon even this coherence and give themselves up to the sheer delight of singing. What is this joy I speak of, this singing exultantly? It is an inner melody that means our hearts are bursting with feeling that words cannot contain. And to whom does such joy belong, if not to the God who is beyond language? When words will not come, and you cannot keep silent, what else can you do but let the melody soar? What else can you do when the rejoicing heart runs out of words and the intensity of your joy will not be imprisoned by language? What else can you do but to sing out to God with songs of joy? I don't know whether he means uh, singing in tongues or whether he just means singing a melody. But uh, one way or another, an exhortation to you. Exultant, exultant praise. Isaiah 17, our first Bible reading. Turning back uh, online and uh, scrolling back before A Song of God's Assembled. <coughs> if you're using books, you'll need to find a Bible off the shelf with both covenants in. And Hosiah opens the prophecy section, uh, which concludes the Hebrew scriptures. So between half and two thirds of the way. So if you open halfway, move towards the back. After the wisdom literature, Psalms and so on, you should find Isaiah. We for the large number 17 at the head of the paragraph. That's the chapter number, Isaiah 17. An oracle concerning Damascus. <coughs> See, Damascus will cease to be a city and will become a heap of ruins. Her towns will be deserted forever. There will be places for flocks which will lie down and no one will make them afraid. The fortress will disappear from Ephraim. 
and the kingdom from Damascus, the remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the children of Israel, says the Lord of hosts. On that day, the glory of Jacob will be brought low and the fat of his flesh will grow lean and it shall be as when reapers gather standing grain and their arms harvest ears. And as when one gleans the ears of grain in the valley of Rephaim, gleanings will be left in it as when an olive tree is beaten, two or three berries in the top of the highest bough, four or five on the branches of a fruit tree, says the Lord God of Israel. On that day, people will regard their maker and their eyes will look to the Holy One of Israel and they will not have regard for the altars, the work of their hands. They will not look to what their own fingers have made, either the sacred poles or the altars of incense. On that day, their strong cities will be like the deserted places of the Hivites and the Amorites, which they deserted because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. You have forgotten the God of your salvation and have not remembered the rock of your refuge. Therefore, though you plant pleasant plants and set out slips of an alien God, though you make them grow on the day you plant them and make them blossom in the morning that you sow, yet the harvest will flee away on a day of grief and incurable pain. Ah, the thunder of many peoples, they thunder like the thundering of the sea. Ah, the roar of nations, they roar like the roaring of mighty waters. The nations roar like the roaring of many waters, but he will rebuke them and they will flee far away, chased like chaff on the mountains before the wind, the whirling dust before the storm. At evening time, lo, a terror, before morning they are no more. This is the fate of those who despoil us, and the lot of those who plunder us. So we're in the first book of Isaiah. We just have the one, but it's in three parts, and this is in that first part before exile, the middle during the third after, and the aim of the writer of this portion is to encourage us to sort ourselves out, to encourage the Hebrew people and us by default as we're reading it also, to sort ourselves out um, to, if possible, avoid the destruction that is to come. A little bit like those uh, climate change activists, climate breakdown, climate rebellion people, stop oil, encouraging us to recognise the um, inevitable consequence of our continued reliance and burning of fossil fuels trying to have us uh, recognise that responsibility and act on it. It is already too late, but before it's too, too late. And uh, there's a warning against Damascus, then I guess a significant uh, dynasty, rule, empire, um, and the cities from which they rule will be no more, and uh, sheep will uh, graze where there was once civic society. However, also, the glory of Jacob will be brought low and there will be gleanings left for those to gather as they come by. And that is because this army of uh, Babylon, the Assyrians, to take God's people into captivity, take them and their olive trees that they would have harvested are left for others to harvest and to take the gleanings. And on that day, we are told, God's people will look to God and not the work of their hands, their idols, which they have been um, looking to for support and encouragement and sustenance. It sounds like they have this um, sort of practice where they plant plants that grow miraculously during the day uh, as proof of the existence of the magic of their, the, the psychic powers of their idols. But the strong cities will become deserted places because, and why? Because God's people, we, have forgotten our God, and it is our God that saves. We have not remembered the rock of our refuge. God of salvation, rock of refuge. It's a typical Hebrew oral culture way of saying the same thing twice. You've forgotten the God of your salvation, you've not remembered the rock of your refuge. So although you plant pleasant plants and set out slips of an alien god and make them grow on the day you plant them, the harvest will flee. So you will plant, but you will be taken away. You won't be able to take, gather in the harvest yourself because you will be in exile. And so it is with anything, any project that we set in train, unless we do it with reverence and fear before God, within God's time, direction, love, obedience, we cannot guarantee that we will see it coming to fruition because we may be moved on either to teach us a lesson, which would be our interpretation here that we're given by Isaiah, or other circumstances. And uh, the call of Isaiah here, the call of God, is to sort ourselves out so that we don't actually face that 
separation. We can stick with it. Sadly, God's people didn't listen, and so they suffered the consequences. May we listen that we need not. Matthew 9, from 35 to 10, 15 is our next reading. If you are following online, just scroll on to it. Following the Bible, move towards the back of the book from where you were, and at the end of the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures, you will arrive at the Gospels in the Greek, about two-thirds of the way through your Bible, as you come across the Second Covenant. We're looking for the large number 9, chapter 9, and the small number in the text, the verses 35. We're going on from Matthew 9, 35, to chapter 10, verse 15. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore asked the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. So Jesus moves about teaching in synagogues, telling the good news of the kingdom and healing. And he's concerned because they, they don't seem to have any leaders. Maybe it's because they're distant from Jerusalem. They, they're not uh, caught up in that sort of temple worship. And uh, they are just like sheep without a shepherd. In response to that, he calls the 12 disciples and they are listed. He gives them authority over unclean spirits and to heal diseases. And he sends them out, not among the Gentiles, but among God's people to the lost sheep, those ones that he says are like those without a leader. And he tells them to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers and cast out demons. And they have received the gift of God without payment, so they are to go and rely on the support, hospitality of those they are serving. And if they are welcomed, they are to live peaceably and leave their peace. If they are not welcomed, they are to move on. The list of 12 lets us know that this is a um, credible gospel. The 12 keep being mentioned in the four gospels that we have, and that was one of the reasons why they were selected. There are other gospels that are not included in the Bible, I guess, because they don't have these 12 listed and repeatedly so throughout the 12 witnesses. And there are still people in our own time who are in need of a shepherd and we are called and sent as Jesus 12 were in those days and we have that same power to heal to restore that same heart to repair and to reconcile and we also ought perhaps to have that same wisdom to work with those that have the same ideals as we do even if perhaps not on the same basis May God be gracious and may God's rule be established. To the responsory back in evening prayer, all saints to Advent. Lord, you, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Mary. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. 
From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the end of this day and we look back across those hours and uh, seek out those moments, touching places where we have known your presence with us, your healing, your encouragement, your support, your rest, your inspiration, in conversations, in the receiving of good news, in achievements of our own of creativity, either that we have expressed or appreciated, we thank you for all that goodness. We also look back over the day, and it might have been our lot to have had bad news, maybe had to give bad news. We might have, might have lived with pain, submitted to addiction, done those things that we know have not done us good, or even given you pleasure. And so we come to you at the end of the day praying for your protection, your healing, and your rescue. From Release International, we pray for ethnic Kyrgyz Christian Olva Bek Turdakun, who spent 10 months from 2018 in a concentration camp in Xinjiang province, China. We thank God for the ways he secretly shared the gospel despite intense surveillance. Sounds like he is out. I pray that others will also find their freedom. From Christian Aid, their annual lecture, Christian Aid lecture, is taking place tonight. The Right Honourable David Lammy speaks on a force for good cooperating across borders. The Joint Public Issues Team Prayer for Ukraine, part of which reads, God of all with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. And we extend our concern and our lament to all places and all peoples that are suffering under military oppression. From Suffolk Diocese. Excuse me, we pray for Gary, who is the lead clergy person with four, Kesgrave with Little Beelings and Playford group of parishes, and Martin, who is a reader there. There are the ministers, treasurers, wardens, and secretaries. Pray for their uh, PCC's electoral role, congregations, communities, that they may respond to your call for them to speak up for what is right and true, to get involved in the healing, of provision, of repair, of reconciliation. As they have received freely, may they freely give, and may they know the establishment of your rule in their place. And we pray for all chaplains, uniformed organisations for young people, that they may help those young people avoid the difficulties of life that may befall them if they do not live right and live well. May they give encouragement to those young people too, that they have a voice and an opportunity to make a difference. And five years after fleeing persecution in Myanmar, many thousands of Rohingya, Rohingya children are still stuck in a vast dangerous refugee camp in Bangladesh. We pray that they will not be forgotten and they'll be able to build new lives and have their dreams fulfilled. May they be restored as your people were after their exile. And we pray for the people and businesses in Halesworth associated with the addresses of Halesworth Road, Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Holton Road. We pray for the businesses based there that they'll make good decisions in these days and continue to be able to offer goods, jobs and services to the local community. And uh, we pray for the people living there where things are going well. May they turn to you with thanksgiving to their neighbours with support. And where things are challenging, 
may they receive the help they need and be able to find that which they seek. May faith be a supportive experience for them. We ask your blessing on Peter and Gemma, Sally, Liz, Ron and Jean, Peter, Jenny, Linda, Emily, Sam, Daniel, Becky, Helen, and others we may know for whom life is difficult at this moment. We pray that you will interact, engage with them in sovereign grace, that they will know your presence, your peace, and your provision. We thank you for all that's good in the lives of Jean, Peter, Mary, Emma, Vera, Tony, Jim, Len, and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those that have taken their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who are totally faithfully here and who remember Cecilia, we remember too all whose years mind for us at this time. We thank you that we have the opportunity to worship you in word and in melody. And to serve you by speaking the truth, even if that means we fall out with the communities within which we live. May Cecilia pray for us. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, we may share with them, have a share with them in your eternal kingdom. And we pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of loved one or a change in life chances that we will hear your voice spoken, inspired through your incarnate mouth by the breath of your spirit to bring light in our darkness, order in our chaos, fruitfulness in our aridity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son Christ, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.